of the President of the United States, the United States Army, and a grateful nation, please accept this flag as a symbol of our appreciation for your loved one's honorable and faithful service. Thank you very much.
Good afternoon. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Deb Rogers. I'm a longtime friend of Verana's. It is my honor to be here as we gather together with Ralph's family to comfort them as they mourn his loss and celebrate his life. We remember Ralph and we join our hearts together to give comfort and strength to his family. Mourning is a time filled with many emotions and memories, both bitter and sweet. We begin our service with the recitation of psalms and prayers, thus linking Ralph's life with the millennia old tradition of the people of Israel and the eternity of God. It is a fearful thing to love what death can touch, a fearful thing to love, hope, dream, to be, to be, and oh, to lose. A thing for fools, this, and a holy thing, a holy thing to love. For your life has lived in me, your laugh once lifted me, your word was gift to me. To remember this brings a painful joy. Tis a human thing, love, a holy thing, to love what death has touched. Psalm 23. Adonai is my shepherd, I shall not want. God makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters, and restores my soul. You lead me in right paths for the sake of your name. Even when I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You have set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of God forever. Our rabbis taught that there are three crowns, the crown of Torah, the crown of priesthood, and the crown of royalty. But they emphasize that the crown of a good name excels them all. The book of Ecclesiastes says, Tov shem mi shemen tov, a good name is to be treasured above precious oil. Wealth, health, even life passes away but a good name lives forever. It is this view that the Talmud teaches, monuments need not be erected for the righteous, their deeds are their memorials. They will be remembered and revered for the kindness they have shown and for the love they have given. They are shining examples of what it means to be a mensch. I'd like to invite Ralph's son Larry up to give a few, share a few words. Thank you. I don't typically speak with notes. I usually can just say what's on my top of my head, but for this occasion, I couldn't. And and I'm going to start by saying that. I'm gonna say words that 10-year-old Larry Sills could never fathom saying, which is, thank God for my siblings. <laughs> um, they've been terrific and it's been a hard road the last few years and they've been really helpful, particularly my sister who did all the heavy lifting. Um, you know, I, I myself have been blessed with wonderful children and they're my whole life. I move heaven and earth for them, and when they're feeling sad, I feel sad. When they're happy, I'm happy. Uh, and hopefully I've been a good father. I think I have. But I know in a large part, my success as a father has been because of this man, my father. He showed us the way. He was my role model. Uh, if he had been Darth Vader, maybe he wouldn't have been such a great role model, but he wasn't. And as such, he was 
he was a guiding light. He told us what to do and what not to do. Um, so whether consciously or subconsciously, I found that I've emulated a lot of things that he did himself. Um, he slowly but surely has disappeared the last five or six years due to illness and dementia, failing memory. Uh, but uh, right up to the end, he recognized his kids. He still knew who we were, still greeted us by name when he was talking because we were his life, we knew that. And uh, he hasn't been the same man the last several years. Communication's been difficult, and in the end, it was pretty one-sided. But I choose to remember my father as he was, you know, visiting him in Shaker Boulevard, and, you know, just having conversations about anything, the Indians, his stamp collection, it doesn't make any difference. I always enjoyed talking with him and being with him. Uh, yeah, I'm going to share an incident just to show you how I've always felt this way. Um, when I was 18 and a freshman at OSU, uh, this one Friday night for the first time in my life, I got myself tremendously drunk. And uh, at one o'clock in the morning, I called my father. And I was with a friend who tried real hard to talk me out of it, but I still did it anyhow. And my father could have been upset that I was essentially pissing away his tuition money, or he could have been angry for waking him up at one o'clock in the morning, but he laughed. He thought it was funny. And we joked about it a long time thereafter. That's the way my dad was. Everything to him that we did was something he was tickled by. Um, so I don't know, if there is an afterlife, I, I'd like to think that in, in my mind, He's, he's driving down the highway in his 65 powder blue Cadillac convertible. Um, my mother's by his side, probably urging him to get, a, get her some ice cream. And my brother Steve's in the back seat going, I'd like a triple scoop of ice cream and another Cadillac if you mind buying me one too. Um, he's gonna be missed by everybody because he touched everybody's life. Thank you. Alan, you want to come up? I'll Thank you. I do not need this, but I brought it anyway. Um, Pops, hey, that's what I called them. So my grandchildren call me. Pops, Cavs lost last night. <laughs> Tribe has won two in a row. Um, maybe today, three. I had several bonds with my father. One of them was sports, and we talked sports all the time. The other one was we shared the same birthday. And um, we shared the same birthday with William Shakespeare, Shirley Temple, Valerie Bertinelli, Chuck Kickle. I mean, there was a lot of important people <laughs> that we shared birthdays with. And 1957, when I was born, I can still hear my brother Larry saying, send them back. Send them back, take them back. Um, thankfully, he didn't take me back. I stayed with him, celebrated 65 birthdays with my father. And um, two years later, one day short of two years later, he got another birthday present, my sister. And I was yelling, take him back, take them back. Take her back, I'm sorry. <laughs> but he kept her too. And uh, so together we shared 63 birthdays together. And um, every time I have a birthday now, mine's, it's coming up. My dad just missed his birthday, his 94th birthday. I'll be thinking about him and um, have an extra piece of cake for him. Oh, yeah, don't worry, Pops. Cavs are going to come back. They're going to win this series. I swear they're going to beat the Knicks. And uh, Guardians are going to win three in a row because Beebs is on the hill today. So all's good. Mike. I'll just keep this short. Today we are here to say goodbye to the one man I have ever known as my father, but to the only person I could ever associate with the word father as well. Bob Cratchit, Atticus Finch, Ben Cartwright, Stephen Douglas, Michael Brady, 
Gomez Adams, all famous fathers. But they ain't got nothing on Ralph Sills. He was strong, towering, unquestioned, sometimes fearsome, but unconditionally loving Sills family patriarch who did everything for his wife and children because family meant everything to him. I consider myself truly blessed to, in life to be able to make, in all sincerity and without exaggeration, this glowing praise for my father. But I'm as lucky as all get out to be able to say the same about my mother as well. I don't know what I did so well in a past life to deserve such awesome parents in this one, but it must have been truly spectacular because this time around, I hit the parent lottery. You know, I wish I'd known Ralph Sills better. Our paths crossed many times over the years as we celebrated with our families together. Um, but after speaking with Larry and Alan and Rana and Michael last night and their uh, families, I was reminded of a story in the Talmud about a man named Choni. You might have heard this story before. One day as Choni was traveling along, along the road, he saw a man planting a carob tree. Choni asked him, how long will it take for that tree to bear fruit? The man said, about 70 years. And Choni, uh, Choni said, do you think you're going to live for another 70 years? And he said, no, I found carob trees growing when I was born because my forefathers planted them for me. So I also plant them for my children and for their children and their children. Lador Vador, from one generation to the next, we offer gratitude for those who came before us and we plant seeds for those who will come after. And as we've just heard, Ralph was the living embodiment of this story. Everything was family to him. Throughout life, he planted seeds, not actual seeds, but seeds of love for all those who came after him, his children, his grandchildren, and his great-grandchildren. His time and his energy and love was spent nurturing his children, providing for his children, teaching his children, Larry, Alan, Rana, Michael, and Stephen of blessed memory. These lessons in love were also passed on to his grandchildren and great-grandchildren, and I think it's important that we name them because they were so important to him. Stephen's children, Jason and Amanda, Jason and Jennifer's children, Kylie and Cameron, Larry and Janet's children, Jenna, Melissa, and Ethan. Jenna and Brandon's children, Sophie, Ryan, and Evie. Melissa and Nate's daughter, Nora. Alan and Michelle's children, Danielle and Nicole. And Nicole and Matthew's children, Skylar and Kira. And Rana and Mike's son, Parker. Ralph opened an insurance business in the early 50s after he returned from a stint in the army at Fort Sill in Oklahoma. There are only 24 hours in a day, and as a father of five and a small business owner, Ralph made the most of those hours. He built a thriving business to provide for his family and worked many hours at the office to build a secure future for his children. Saturdays were work days for him too, but they were also family days. Larry remembers how his father would take each of the boys individually, rotating week by week to the office with him on Saturday mornings. Afterwards, it was to the bowling alley where he'd buy Larry a buttered bagel and a Coke as Larry watched his dad bowl. And then they'd head off together to visit Ralph's parents, Lador Vador. Each week, a different son taken in turn for this special one-on-one -on -one time with their dad, an opportunity to have him all to themselves. While Rana wasn't part of this Saturday rotation, her one-on-one -on -one time was often spent with him at Gabo's art shows. Occasionally, she'd fall in love with a piece, and when the auction price exceeded her budget as a young working 20-something, dad would purchase the piece for her. Some years later, the world learned that many of Gabo's pieces were bogus, but the time they spent together at those art shows was as real and as cherished as it gets. 
Ralph had five very different children who each needed their dad in different ways. And he spent his time with them on their terms. Now we've heard from Alan, you know, as a native Clevelander, Ralph had this love of sports. He was a Cavs season ticket holder. He enjoyed attending many Indians games every year. And Alan, I think is the one who picked up the sports gene from him. Alan also remembers the times that dad would join him at the Northwood School basketball courts just up the street from where they lived, and shoot some hoops with him and his teenage friends. He wasn't the best basketball player, but he recognized the value of the time spent. On the other end of the sports spectrum was Michael. Michael preferred it looking at stars through telescopes instead of on ball fields. But he had his share of Indians games with Ralph too. He shared with me a story about uh, one game in particular. He was 13. It was a Sunday afternoon doubleheader with the Kansas City Royals. After many rain delays, most fans had left. The stadium was nearly empty. Even Ralph and Mike were making their way to the exit when Kansas City star Amos Otis hit a home run that landed three sections away from where they were walking. So Ralph turned to Mike and said, go get that ball and I'll block anybody else who gets close. <laughs> In an empty stadium. Mike still has the ball. Ralph had a passion for history, especially World War II and the Civil War. In fact, after putting all five thick kids through college, he went back to John Carroll and got a master's degree in history. As we heard, he was also a collector. He collected guns, coins, baseball cards, stamps, and trains, to name a few. Jenna remembers him sitting in his office going through his stamps and his baseball cards. He pursued collectibles partly as an investment to help secure his kids' future, but it was such a passion for him. He had a collection of historic rifles and firearms, and although he'd never fired a single one of them, he could tell you the story behind every gun in his collection. Travel was prohibitively expensive for a family of seven, so his stamp collection was how Ralph explored the world. Ralph taught by example. Larry just shared with us about how his dad taught him to be a husband and a father, and uh, Alan also. Ralph always washed the dishes after meals and loved to do the grocery shopping. Now he was a big guy, and I'm not only talking big, but larger than life. He was the king of the household and his decisions were final, leading to many spirited discussions with Marlene. Although this big strong guy wasn't immune to Marlene's charms, even the grandchildren know that when Ralph issued an unpopular edict around the family, all Marlene needed to do was go over, sit on his lap, and cuddle him a little bit. Soon they'd disappear from the room, and the next day, Ralph miraculously had had a change of heart. Marlene did, however, have to share that cuddly lap. Ralph and the kids wanted a dog. They went into the Richmond Mall pet shop one day with a vision of this big dog that they could cuddle, and a bit later, they walked out with the toy poodle. There's Marlene's influence again, I think. Ralph and Susu were quick and constant companions. Ralph took Susu to work with him. Susu sat on his lap while he watched TV, ate Ralph's food. Jenna remembers grandpa watching TV with her uncle Steve as they watched Westerns, war movies, and The Price is Right, always with a toy poodle sitting on his lap. After Susu died, Ralph brought home Shayna, and then Shaney, and then Olive, each of whom had an exclusive and possessive relationship with Ralph. When the grandkids and great grandkids came along, he continued to spread those seeds of love, even if he didn't know what to do with young children. Rana remembers a trip to Florida with Parker when he was six weeks old to visit Ralph and Marlene. Rana and Marlene left Ralph in the car with a sleeping Parker to do the grocery shopping. Some minutes later, Rana heard a loud, piercing cry and turned to see Ralph coming in, walking quickly, holding a wailing Parker at arm's length in front of him, yelling, Rana, your kid's crying. <laughs> For Ralph, kids didn't become people until they were at least five. There's the old saying, live, laugh, and love, and that is how Ralph lived his life. He was a larger than life character, living life to the fullest, laughed often, 
especially at the antics of his kids. <laughs> and more than anything, he loved with all his heart. Whether he spread his love through hard work, ensuring his family was taken care of, teaching his children what it meant to be a good husband, father, and all around human being, or simply letting them know with individual attention what they meant to him, Ralph planted seeds of love throughout his life. We can honor his memory best by continuing to plant seeds of love with our lives. May his memory always be a blessing and may we carry on our lives so as to bring blessing to his memory. Birth is a beginning and death a destination and life is a journey from childhood to maturity, from youth to old age, from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion, and then perhaps, if we're lucky, to wisdom, from weakness to strength, or strength to weakness and often back again, from health to sickness and back we pray to health again, from offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion, from grief to understanding, from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat, until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some place along the way, but in having made the journey stage by stage, a sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning and death a destination, and life is a journey, a sacred pilgrimage to life everlasting. The dust returns to the earth as it was. The spirit returns to God who gave it. It's only the house of the spirit which we now lay within the earth. The spirit itself cannot die. Receive in mercy, O God, the soul of our departed, Ralph Paul Sills. Grant him that everlasting peace which you have prepared for us in the world to come. Though no human eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor mind has grasped it, still it is our sure inheritance and our everlasting fortune. O oh God, help us to understand that grief and love go hand in hand, that the pain which loss inflicts is the measure of a love stronger than death. Though we cry in anguish of our hearts, may we be like children who know that their parent is near and who cling unafraid to the trusted hand. In this spirit, O oh God, do we commit all that is precious to us, to your keeping. El male rachamim shochein v'meromim Hametze menucha nechona Tachad kanfei hashchina Im kedoshim utahorim kezohar harakia mazirim et nishmad ruvein shehalach leolamo baal harachamim yastireinu beseta kenafav leolamim. Ve'yitror b'yitror ha'chayim et nishmato Adonai hu'nachalato V'yanuach b'shalom al mishkavo V'nomar Amen Please rise.
May the love and eternal connection of our souls give us strength as we turn to recite the words hallowed by time. Sanctifying the name of God, we honor the memory of Ralph P. Sills with the words of Kadish Yatom, the Mourner's Kaddish. Yikadal v'yikadash me'raba ve'alma divra chirite v'yamlich malchute v'chayechon u'v'yomechon u'chaye d'chol beit Yisrael Ba'agala ubizman kari vimru amen. Yeheshme raba mabarach le'olam ulame almaya. Yit barach vishtabach vipa'ar vidroman vidnase. Vitadar vitale vitalal shemei bekudusha brechu. Le'ela min kol birchata veshirata. Tushbechata venechamata. Da'amiran ve'alma vimru amen. Yehesh Lama Rabba Min Shemaya, Bechayim Aleinu Vel Kol Yisrael, Vimru Amen. Ose Shalom Bim Ramav, Huya Ase Shalom, Aleinu Vel Kol Yisrael, Vimru Amen. Al Mekomo Yavo Beshalom, may Ralph come to his eternal home in peace. In Jewish tradition, to shovel dirt onto the grave is a mitzvah a righteous act which we do without any hope of reward. With this act, we take on the responsibility of caring for our loved one until the very end. Our loved ones deserve to be buried by kind hands, knowing hands, sorrowful hands. You are invited to participate in this mitzvah. It's a painful act. However, it's one born of love and compassion for those who have meant so much to us. Adonai Natan, Adonai Lakach, Yehishem, Adonai Mavarach. God, you have given, God, you have taken away. Blessed be the name of God. May the memory of Ralph be a blessing as we mark that his essence will never leave our hearts and souls. <laughs>